If you're very conversant with world news, especially news related to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, you'd notice one very common word, sanctions. Essentially, a sanction is a penalty or a punishment that is imposed on a country in order to force it to change its behavior. Since the Cold War ended, the United Nations Security Council has been using sanctions to respond to a lot of global peace and security problems. They've got 13 different kinds of sanctions that put the squeeze on leaders to do what the council wants, but even though it seems like a no-brainer, sanctions aren't a surefire way to get full or quick cooperation. But what exactly are sanctions? And how do they work? Okay, so sanctions are basically a way for countries to punish other countries for not playing nice. It's like when you're playing a game with someone and they're not following the rules, so you tell them they can't play anymore. In real life, countries use sanctions to try to get other countries to change their behavior. For example, when the United States pulled out of the nuclear deal with Iran, they reimposed sanctions on the country. This meant that Iran couldn't sell as much oil or do as much international trade, which hurt their economy. The hope was that this would make Iran come back to the negotiating table and agree to a new, tougher nuclear deal. Another example is North Korea. The United Nations has imposed a bunch of sanctions on North Korea to try to get them to stop their nuclear weapons program. These sanctions have included things like restrictions on what they can import and export, as well as travel bans on North Korean officials. Basically, the idea behind sanctions is to make it really hard for a country to do normal things like trade or banking. The hope is that by putting this pressure on them, they'll change their behavior and do what the other countries want them to do. There are actually several different types of sanctions that countries can use to try to influence the behavior of other countries. One of the most common types is trade sanctions. These are restrictions on a country's ability to import or export goods. For example, the United States has imposed trade sanctions on countries like Cuba and North Korea, making it difficult for them to sell their products on the global market. Another type of sanction is financial sanctions. These are restrictions on a country's access to the international banking system. For example, the United States has imposed financial sanctions on Iran, freezing its assets and making it difficult for them to conduct international business. Travel bans are another type of sanction. These are restrictions on individuals associated with a targeted country from traveling to other countries. For example, the United States has imposed travel bans on officials from North Korea and Venezuela. There are also diplomatic sanctions, which involve the suspension or expulsion of diplomatic relations between countries. This can include things like recalling ambassadors or closing embassies. How are they used to inflict damage on a country? One way that sanctions can cause damage is by hurting the targeted country's economy. For example, trade sanctions can make it difficult for a country to sell its products on the global market, which can result in decreased revenue and increased unemployment. Financial sanctions can freeze a country's assets or make it difficult for them to access the international banking system, which can make it difficult for the country to pay its bills or conduct international business. Sanctions can also have a negative impact on the targeted country's population. For example, if a country is unable to import necessary goods due to trade sanctions, it can lead to shortages of food, medicine, and other essential items. This can lead to increased suffering and even death for the population. In addition, travel bans can prevent people from the targeted country from traveling to other countries, which can limit educational and employment opportunities. While the goal of sanctions is to put pressure on a country to change its behavior, the damage inflicted can sometimes be severe and long-lasting. In some cases, sanctions can cause unintended consequences, such as increased hostility from the targeted country or negative effects on innocent civilians. But do sanctions always work? The effectiveness of sanctions can be mixed, and it's not always guaranteed that they will work. Sanctions rely on the targeted country feeling the economic pressure and being willing to change their behavior in order to have the sanctions lifted. However, not all countries respond in the way that the sanctioning country hopes. For example, in the case of North Korea, the United Nations has imposed a number of sanctions in an effort to get the country to give up its nuclear weapons program.
Despite these sanctions, North Korea has continued to develop its nuclear capabilities and has not shown any willingness to change its behavior. Similarly, in Venezuela, the United States has imposed a number of sanctions in an effort to pressure the government to hold free and fair elections and respect human rights. However, the situation in Venezuela has continued to deteriorate, with the government cracking down on opposition leaders and the economy in freefall. There are also cases where sanctions have been successful in achieving their desired outcome. For example, the sanctions imposed on South Africa during the apartheid era were credited with playing a significant role in ending the discriminatory policies of the government. The effectiveness of sanctions depends on a variety of factors, including the political climate of the countries involved and the specific type of sanction being used. While sanctions can sometimes be successful in achieving their goals, there is no guarantee that they will work in every situation. Why do sanctions fail in most cases? As I said, putting sanctions on countries or individuals is usually not very effective. There are a couple of reasons why that is. First off, sometimes sanctions just aren't a realistic option because of the situation or the people involved. And secondly, even when sanctions are put in place, they're often not enforced properly. Let's talk about the first reason. Sometimes people use sanctions as a way to make it look like they're taking action without actually doing anything substantial. This is what we call an alibi function. Basically, they're trying to cover their butts by saying they did something, even if it won't really make a difference. The problem is, when people use sanctions like this, they don't always think about whether or not they're actually going to work. They just kind of slap them on there and hope for the best. But if you want sanctions to work, you need to think about a few things first. For example, you need to figure out if the sanctions are actually going to make the people you're targeting change their behavior. And if they are, you need to think about what kind of pressure is going to work best. You also need to make sure that the sanctions are going to be enforced properly. Do the neighboring countries or other important players have the will and the means to make sure the sanctions are actually happening? Basically, in order to make sanctions work, you need to really understand the people you're trying to target. You need to know what motivates them, how strong they are, how they operate, who their leaders are, and who they're friends with. If you don't have a good grasp on all of these things, your sanctions are probably not going to work very well. If you're going to put sanctions on someone or something, you need to make sure that they're actually going to be enforced. Otherwise, what's the point? When countries actually put effort into enforcing the sanctions, they tend to be more effective. For example, there were these naval task forces in Iraq and Libya that were supposed to make sure the sanctions were being followed. But even then, there were still problems. In Libya, for example, weapons were still getting through and being used in other countries. The thing is, enforcing sanctions takes a lot of resources, and sometimes countries just don't want to put in the effort. And in some cases, the responsibility for enforcing the sanctions falls on individual countries or even peacekeepers who aren't really trained for that kind of thing. There are also other challenges, like countries having weak custom systems or porous borders that make it hard to control what's coming in and going out. There are also issues with regulating things like weapons transfers and making sure that people who violate the sanctions are actually punished. All of these things make it hard to enforce sanctions effectively. Sanctions are a complex and powerful tool that countries can use to try to influence the behavior of other countries. While they can be effective, they are not without their drawbacks, and they must be used carefully and thoughtfully in order to avoid unintended consequences.